Welcome back to Obermatt Stock Investing. We are investing in 20 stocks over the next 6 to 9 months of 5,000 francs each, with the purpose that we have 100,000 invested in stocks in Europe. Today it's the FTSE 100 Obermatt Top 10 list and we'll use that as a guidance to decide what stocks to invest in the UK. Let's have a look at that. That's the latest update, open my top 10 stocks. You see here the FTSE 100. We click on that and what we see in front of us are the top stocks in the UK index. Now, the UK is a little bit special right now because there is the danger of Brexit. And Brexit actually is not good for investors. Investors like open borders because that gives them the best opportunities to grow. As soon as countries close their, door, their borders, it means that the, uh, that the economy is going to shrink and that's bad for investors. Now in the UK, in the FTSE 100, we have a lot of, of stocks that are actually quite international. So even if the UK leaves the European Union, if you invest in a stock that is predominantly outside of Europe, we have no problems. But that's also the reason why I don't want to invest in financial services companies because they are going to suffer if Britain leaves the European Union. So if I look here at the top 100 value companies, at the top 10 value companies of the FTSE 100, I see uh, everything asset management and that's definitely something I don't want to invest. But I see Compass, actually Compass in restaurants and Smith and Nephew in healthcare equipment. Now healthcare equipment is definitely something that is not bound by the borders. So let's have a look at that. How does that look? Actually, what I can see here is that the growth rank of Smith & Nephew is quite bad, but everything else is really good. So if I see here um, the value metrics in detail, they have been a lot worse in 2015, now in 2016. Uh, the value, you know, what you get in terms of revenues for the price you pay for the stock is excellent. The same uh, is true for profits. And the same is true for the dividend yield. That overall gives us a value rating of 100, which is really good. Growth is not that good. Probably the reason why the stock is cheap. Let's Google that. Let's Google Smith and Nephew uh, and, and see uh, how they actually do. Let's Google you know, what, what is new about them. Let's click on news. Okay, and what I see here is that there is a lot of research even, you know, uh, small cap wired stock performance and target update on Smith & Nephew. Let's look what the professionals say about these companies. Let's click here. Of course, they want to sell you advertising. That's how it is. And let's see um, what they have to say here now. Shares are trading at a lower level. Uh, I actually don't really see a lot of interesting things here uh, for uh, Smith & Nephew. Uh, let's go back. Uh, let's look what Google delivers us in terms of the last coverage. There's nothing that really looks bad on Smith & Nephew right now. Let's have a look at the next page. Are analysts, you know, bullish at Smith & Nephew? Let's have a look at that. What do they say? This is actually rather new. Uh, again, this, a similar site as it looks. And it says three rated buy, zero sell, three hold, 50% are positive. Um, it says what they are. Let's have, let's have a look at them. Um, a Smith and Nephew website. Uh, for that, actually, I go back to um, the one of my top ten stocks, Smith and Nephew. Uh, I go to their website, see what they have on their website. They have a optimized website for tablets. That's quite good. Let's see what they have to say to investors. Who we are. Let's have a look who they are. Very convenient. Our history, our business, our marketplace. 
let's have to let's have a look at what they do in terms of business. They have manufacturing, they have R&D. It's all really interesting, but that's also not that insightful. Let's look at the strategy, what they have, Smith & Nephew. Innovate for value. I guess there's nothing really specific here where they're getting really excited about something. But what you see here is that they are in US, Europe, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada haven't been growing much that we know already from the Obermott research. Let's, let's, Google, let's Google the news on Smith & Nephew. What are the news on Smith & Nephew? Now again, there are a lot of news actually from research analysts that you could use. They have new products. Nomura has started to cover them. I think it's 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 a good company. Smith and Nephew is a company that is definitely has no nothing really that speaks against it. And this is really the reason why I'm doing this video is to show you, you know, if you look at the company, even if you don't know it, um, very quickly with Google you can get an overview if it's worth investing in that company, if there's anything fishy about it, and if you find out that a large company in the right sector has nothing special to say about them, it's actually a good sign that you can invest without a lot of worries. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy Smith & Nephew stocks and you'll see that next time on the video. Thank you very much for being with us and enjoy your own stock investing. Bye-bye.